Welcome to Club E. Hi, I'm Rick Brimacolm of Brimacolm & Associates. I am your architect for business growth. Today, we're going to be talking about business strategies during the COVID-19 time. But first, I want to thank our sponsors. Irish Titan is an e-commerce and development firm. Boulay Group CPAs and Advisors. Highland Bank, a locally owned community bank. Romaine Berg, a digital agency. Minnesota Sales, a sales acceleration company, and the Network Connect, a catalytic gateway for connecting investors, service providers, companies, and job seekers. I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Eric Michelet, who is founder and president of Strategic Business Coach. Welcome, Eric. Thank you very much, Rick, for inviting me and Lucas for all your assistance. Eric. Greatly appreciated. Yeah, and thank you for being here. Uh, Eric and I have had the pleasure to know each other for a long, long time, so it's fun to have you, Eric. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, to contact Eric uh, after the event today, um, his email address uh, and website will be in the comments field, so you can uh, double check that. But the website, just to give it to you here, is www.sbci, I assume that stands for Inc., Eric? Yes, it does. So strategic business coach, SBCI, USA.com. But again, in the comments field, you can get Eric's. I'm not going to try to spell his last name because I'll maybe goof it up and uh, make it tough for everybody here. But anyway, again, comments field, uh, you can get Eric's email. So Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your firm, and the various things that you're involved in. Thank you, Rick. I went into consulting uh, to help companies after seeing needs that were so simple to refix usually in cash management, some business operations and technology. Uh, after serving as a CFO and executive um, officer for other companies in different roles, family owned businesses, as well as public, uh, my business practice evolved over time to go into turnaround work and focus mostly on the turnaround practice area. Although I do help other companies that are evolving and growing, the time you need cash the most is when you're growing and cash is usually a symptom of process challenges that companies have. So we uh, spoke a couple of days ago, um, you had been out for a walk. Tell uh, the audience a little bit about how you're trying to stay uh, sane and healthy during the stay at home period. I think all of us are feeling some of the challenges in this time frame. Uh, Rick, you and I have a couple of years on maybe some of your audience, but uh, we've seen a lot. And so this is another variation of some of the challenges that we've faced, but this is different. There is a, you have to really focus on taking care of your physical health. You need to work out on a regular basis. You need to exercise, get into nature. You can't go to public spaces anymore. So you have to find other avenues. I connected with friends and family physically with social distancing, but also through technology and video uh, chats, which has really helped a lot. And I know you uh, like uh, boats and boating per the, uh, the uh, picture you have there on the wall. Have you had a chance to get out on the water yet this year? I have, but it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> it's <been laughs> very cold out there right now. All right. Uh, anything uh, serious you want to tell us? Did you end up uh, falling in the drink or anything uh, like that? I, I, I just about did, yes. And uh, it's very cold, I can assure you. <laughs> Lake right. Minnetonka is not warm. All right. So before we get to our event, I want to talk a little bit about what our audience can receive for your participation. Uh, type in hashtag turnaround because Eric uh, spends uh, some of his practice focused on the turnaround space. So again, hashtag turnaround. Put it in the comment field. Uh, we'll wait for about a week or so to do a drawing. We'll take uh, three of the winners and those folks will get a one hour uh, assessment with Eric and he'll be able to talk to you about your business. Again, it is hashtag turnaround for today. And again, uh, we'll wait for about a week for you folks to uh, participate. But this is intended to be interactive. So if you have questions, please uh, submit those. And uh, Slayer Matt, my sidekick, will uh, get those to me. All right. So Eric, uh, starting and kicking things off, as a business owner, how should they prioritize their business needs in a time of crisis like now? The first thing is to strategize what business do you really want to be in? Ask your team, yourself. Uh, the most important thing is to create a framework for that. And I always ask business owners, what business do you really want to be in? It's surprising how many people are struggling with that um, basic question. 
Um, once you've figured out what business you want to be in and your team uh, obviously has to weigh heavily into that decision, um, then you also have to take it to the next level. If we're going to be in that particular business, I should know exactly what it is I want to be doing within my core. So the next question is, what business am I passionate about? What business is my team passionate about? Uh, you know, if you can't answer that question, then it really creates uh, a challenge. And the other question is, what business can I possibly be number one, two, or three in the marketplace? You want to have credibility, pricing power, and be able to negotiate with various stakeholders certain terms. Another uh, question, number four, is what business are you willing to bleed for? What business am I willing to die for? My commitment and my team's commitment, especially in a crisis matter, more than anything else right now. And if you have to send a message to your competitors. Everybody's looking for ways to take market share right now. And you need to know, and they need to know, that you're willing to defend that market space, your market space, with everything and every resource you have. That's one of the secrets of creating a filter. So those priorities fall into place. When you're looking at possibly changing brands, closing divisions, or maybe adding something, if you run it through that filter, you will figure out very quickly what business you should do now, especially with limited resources. People have so many challenges right now that. Uh, with cash and with uh, the stress levels that their employees and team are facing. Sure. You need so to know I, when to pivot now at the time to make that decision if you have to. Sure. So a business owner asks themselves those questions, they go through that process, and then they come to you, hey, how do I prioritize the business's operating needs? What do, we, what do they do there? First thing is to communicate with your banker. Most people, I hope, by now have really sat down with their banker and discussed what, you know, in a sense, sitting down through virtual and social networking or phone calls. But if you've met with your banker, you should have a plan in place and discuss with them what that plan is and what sources and uses of cash you have. What borrowing base agreements do you have in place? A few, the first contact has to be that banker. If you haven't sat down and talked with them about your situation, you're gonna have some serious issues. Um, the team, of course, is number one in terms of the owner doing a one-on-one and team group communications. But if the bank cuts you off, you don't have to worry about payroll because you won't have payroll to meet. You won't have a team to work with. But then after you've gotten the bank, uh, the banker at least comfortable with the situation, then, sit, then definitely spend all your time with your team. The owner and leader or the key executives must work with the team to make them feel at least somewhat comfortable with the situation and show that you have a pathway and a strategy that you're willing to work with and you have full faith in your team. The biggest thing I see is owners getting nervous about their team and that just creates a fear, uncertainty and doubt, which of course lead to the demise of the business or at least a failure to perform well. And legal counsel. You've got to work with legal counsel in this situation. The laws are changing so quickly. There's many webinars and Zoom conferences on it. Um, but if you don't have a good, strong relationship with inside or outside counsel, uh, you definitely want to have that put in place now. Customers. The top five customers should have been contacted immediately when this started, and that should be by the owner, him or herself, make those calls to the key uh, top five customer contacts and perhaps that's their counterparty, the executive CEO, whoever it may be. And also have your team then contact all top customers immediately. You need to know how they're doing, what they're doing, how you can help them. And these are, you can go in any order, top five, top 20, but those, at least your top 20 should have been contacted by now by all key members of your team. And in the case of the top five, the owner themselves. Vendors, suppliers, and other services, Top five, again, contact those vendors. Uh, the team should be contacting the remaining, at least up to the top 20, if not more, depending upon the industry. Insurance claims. You need to call your broker immediately and have him or her prepare a, at least help you prepare uh, a filing right now. You need to make a claim. Uh, most companies have business owner policies for business interruption. If you call the carrier, they're going to do immediate denial, but get that claim filed. We can speak on that a little later, but 
the courts and the government will probably force something in terms of business interruption. Um, also contact government agencies, depending upon what kind of business you're in, if you're gonna do shutdown, mass layoffs, if you have some um, possible funding sources from them, we can get into that later too, but definitely need to contact government agencies where it applies to your business. So a, a lot there, um, you went, you started with the banker. So uh, we talked about cash flow uh, the other day. I mentioned a uh, long time ago, uh, one of my coworkers said cash is king and it's even more important than your own mom. Um, and so uh, let's focus on the cashier for a moment. Um, and you also mentioned that the banker relationship is, is very critical. So um, what should a business do, A, to uh, have a good relationship with their banker, but then B, um, should they try to get all the cash they can out of maximizing uh, their credit line? And tell us a little bit about uh, PPP and other SBA uh, programs. John Morris did a great job summarizing some of the issues on cash on Monday. But to recap, at the 13 week cash flow, gives you visibility in the organization. It gives your financing sources, your banker or other possibly asset-based lenders, a window into your business. That needs to be managed daily. That is the, one of the most important tools, especially in this environment, because everyone's in turn around one way or another right now, whether they like it or not. Even companies doing well have struggled with supply chain issues. Um, you know, one of the things you want to think of is what do you need the cash for? Jumping in to do PPP and getting you know, people think it's free cash. Yes, it's non-recourse debt through SBA, but it really has some strings attached. They're gonna come out, at least the last three days, some new things have come out as well. So that is not necessarily a free source of cash for people. It's a loan to, uh, it's a grant program, loan to grant style, but in a sense, uh, you could end up burning through that cash and have nothing to show for it if you don't know how to manage that payroll portion of it. Uh, and you may get denied. You have a 1% loan at the end of it, but you still have debt on your books. Uh, and people rushed out to do it and some are returning it, which is interesting. Uh, you know, the SBA programs are excellent. Look at them, but, but don't rush out and pull the line of credit from your bank and max it out. That relationship is key. Poisoning the well with a banker or other uh, entities is, is the worst thing you can do in this environment. They will remember it. They will make your borrowing base agreements difficult to adjust to. And ultimately, you end up getting cut off from your bank. You don't have a business anymore. Your payroll's now frozen. What do you do with no payroll? Your employees leave. So uh, we covered debt a little bit there. Um, let's flip it over and talk about some equity. Uh, right now, uh, should business owners uh, go out to seek equity investors um, as a way to uh, generate cash for their business? You know, it's a difficult question, but I would really say this is not the, not the best time. It's a good question, but a difficult one. Right now, uh, equity, would you actually take your money out of your 401k and put it into some business venture? It's a difficult thing to, to relate to, but the answer is probably no. Or yeah, even I... demand such a high level of equity in the business to make that um, effectively a uh, uh, investment of cash into the business. And what are they going to use the business for the cash for in the business? Yeah. An investor may just become a loan to own program. They may end up controlling or owning your business anyway. Money problems, as Todd ever has always suggested, is a symptom of the business issues. And the money does not solve broken process or uh, broken business issues as well. Uh, Robert uh, Herjvac, I'm not sure I pronounced his name right. Sorry for butchering it. Uh, he really said that on Shark Tank, most of the businesses do not need the capital they think they need. They just need a device in his words, but it's really more than just the device. They really need a structure and framework. And running through the four filters, if you have that in mind, you then decide what business to be in and then commit to that business with your team. Everyone's going to have an inflection point for new capital, but really think hard and fast about doing it now. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, some of my portfolio companies have been asking me the same question. Do they go out and raise uh, equity right now? So it's going to be a tough time. With that said, not all companies um, are, are struggling. So one of my portfolio companies does time tracking and billing with the whole work from uh, home thing. 
not only is their business held up, but they've seen an uptick, obviously. So kind of is a case by case basis. Yes, and it is. And it, it's a tough question and advisors will help guide you through that pathway. And I know you do a fantastic job with that, Rick. Yep. So speaking of advisors for uh, folks that have been in business for a long time, they feel like they, they understand their business um, and uh, you know, they're not just getting uh, going. But for those folks who ask the question, why do they need advice or guidance from the outside, especially at a, at a time like this, what would you say to them? In a crisis, is, regular business is hard enough, but think of a crisis. You have all these variables happening all at once. You've got employees calling you, vendors, customers, possibly bankers, asset-based lenders as an owner or executive. You know, you need a team of advisors to help guide you through that process. Delegate when and where possible uh, and, and advisable. This is going to be with us for probably 12 months, up to maybe 24 it's going to exhaust any business leader or owner if they're not delegating this to their internal team and outside advisors. Yep. So um, speaking of the COVID-19 and, and we're in the crisis uh, period that we are, what's the impact on a team, uh, the company, the culture? Uh, how do you see um, uh, this impacting uh, those things? Absolutely. Any crisis is going to test the team, its values, its faith and ownership in themselves, perhaps the company itself and governmental and other institutions. This is going to be one of the most unusual challenges anybody's ever faced since it affects everything all at once and the entire world at once. Uh, listening to your team is number one. Understand what their concerns are, understand what they're looking for from you. If you can bring that inside and be authentic, but don't show any fear in this process, you can show a humanity in this process, but don't show fear. They're looking to you for assurance, and they're looking to you to have assurance in them as employees. They're, your full faith in them is everything right now. Mm -hmm. So um, made me think of the book Story Brand and the talk of leading somebody through uh, uh, customers, leading customers through in a marketing journey. And the analogy they use, which is very good, is uh, Luke Skywalker and Yoda. And so Luke gets help from Yoda, uh, not just to learn how to uh, navigate a lightsaber, but then also have the internal strength uh, to do that. So this internal strength um, sometimes can be challenging. Being a business leader um, is lonely, uh, can be tough, especially at times like right now. But you have all the team uh, looking to you, the business leader, the owner, the key executive, what should they do if they don't feel like they have all the answers? You know, as a leader, you don't have to have all the answers, but you certainly need to project an idea and a goal for your team. You have to show at least you have a plan and a strategy that you're willing to bring into the fold with the team. You can pivot with the team and that's the secret sauce. Don't, don't just go with your own plan, obviously, but you have to show that you have a vision and a plan and strategy in place in your mind at least. Your team will get your strength from you. Your faith and trust in them is key as mentioned earlier. You never wanna have a leader that wavers or disappears. Jeff Bezos disappeared from Amazon for weeks. He's now back in a hurry after being roundly criticized for disappearing. The some of the trouble they've had could have been well avoided had he jumped in day one. Uh, if a leader is gonna be absent, there's really not much anybody else can do. No one can match the leader's abilities and direction. So I work um, with some of my companies um, utilizing uh, EOS. I've seen uh, EOS transform some of my businesses. I myself am not an EOS implementer, so more kind of armchair quarterback, something we've used. Um, but whether you're using EOS or something else, uh, business owners often share a lot of information and data with their teams and other stakeholders. Sometimes they embrace it. What happens when uh, they don't seem to have the same level of, of concern or understanding about those issues? What should a business owner do then? Right now we're seeing from government, from business leaders, and even from some of our um, uh, other resources through webinars and other events, there's a lot of data being communicated. And some are doing well communicating information. 
actionable information. If you communicate a bunch of data, it doesn't really do anything other than confuse people. Analysts love data, but the rest of us need actionable information. Okay, so um, jumping back, we got a question uh, from Jim. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, culture earlier. So going back there, a question um, was posed, what's the value of culture and how do I bring a team around culture to focus on our vision? You know, the culture of humanity is really what you need with this, especially now, but I'm reading the book, Conscious Capitalism, and what, you know, it really does offer something else. I've read the transcripts before of it, the briefing, but when you really dig into it, it's really the humanity of it right now. Cultures are being tested. People are being let go, possibly, furloughed, whatever the case may be. That tears up the culture of any company. Every person that comes into a company is going to add and change culture. Every person that leaves is going to take away and somehow maybe lose some of that culture. Uh, right now is the time to really work with the team and have fun with some of the things you can to keep that culture going. Darren Lynch, Irish Titan, has done an amazing job of keeping that culture uh, moving forward in a very difficult time. So um, difficult time leads to businesses struggling. Um, you know, Some companies, as I mentioned, um, are gonna get a little bit of a tailwind uh, with what's happening. Other companies are uh, really gonna be hit pretty hard. Um, for a business owner that has a company that's struggling, what options do they have? I myself am thinking, um, hey, time to switch from, from defense to offense. But if a business is really struggling, they're still playing defense, what are their options? We, as we suggested earlier, you know, you want to run through the four filters that I had mentioned before. If you don't know what business you want to be in, you don't know what business you're passionate about, where you're placed in the market, and what you're willing to commit everything to, you can't answer any of the other questions. You don't know which direction to go. That hopefully will help you guide a direction to follow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. We need um, to have, uh, companies need to understand financial statements, core uh, metrics. And if you know those, then what are you looking for? Why do you think you're struggling? Is revenue decreasing, cash uh, volumes are decreasing? Are you seeing people leave voluntarily? Are you having to lay people off? What are the symptoms? And then there are some other options that you have, which is, do you want to file a chapter 11? 363 sale, if you're a restaurant owner right now, that may be an option for you. Ownership and management can buy back the same assets, perhaps at a discount. Personal guarantees weigh in, always speak with your accounting firm and attorney. But there's other techniques that might help you get out of this. And bringing in great advisors right now is the key. And your team advisors will help guide you through the decisions that you need to make both on a personal level and your business as well. Okay. Um, I think a nugget here that uh, probably a lot of business owners haven't uh, thought of or haven't explored to the extent that they might be able to, um, you talked a little earlier about filing a claim with uh, you, their insurance carrier, um, given uh, business uh, continuity. Talk a little bit more about that, explain it some more, because I think that's, a, that's an important takeaway for our talk today. Yes, I mean, people have shared with me they're getting flat out denials or told not to file claims. This is the time to work with your broker and an attorney who specializes in the insurance industry. ISO put out after this um, SARS and MERS case, they created a framework that uh, basically excludes microorganisms within the base policies. Uh, I don't see how that's going to hold up with the way the courts and the uh, legislatures and Congress have suggested. They may have some issues there. There may be holes in the policy or in general. I think that the government entities may, in fact, override the carrier's denials. Uh, I'm sorry, insurance carriers and brokers out there, but I, I don't see how this is going to hold up. Force majeure is a man made situation. This is probably going to somehow be actually held as a man-made situation. Uh, it could be included act of God, uh, you'll check your policies, but definitely file a claim no matter what. It hurts nothing. Your business interruption policy 
will probably cover something over time. And insurance companies to their own um, credit have really stepped up in most cases and in crises. Uh, I think they will step up in this case as well. Okay, another question from the audience, Eric. Um, from Jessica, uh, can you share the role of technology um, and what does it play in the turnaround management um, efforts that, that you do? We spoke earlier off camera and technology investment is stunningly uh, being made now in ways I never thought I'd see myself. Some of the manufacturing companies that I know of, they've put tens of thousands into technology during this crisis. I'm sure they wish they had done it sooner. Um, we're, this is with us for a long time. I don't see this going anywhere away, probably for the next 12 to 24 months. Um, every dollar in technology right now that you put in prior to this and now is gonna be used and used well. If you wanna stay out of turnaround, have excellent top rated technology. A lot of companies I go into, their systems are compromised or are infected with viruses. They've been hacked. Um, a lot of their systems actually are being shared with companies in Russia, China, you name it. Um, they don't even know it. And they're wondering why they're having problems. If there was ever a time to invest in technology, today is definitely that time. So uh, I'm sure your phone has been ringing a lot with um, client, current clients, past clients, other people just wanting to kind of get your perspective on things. What's been the most common question that you've been asked over the last four or six weeks? Most of it involves PPP, um, SBA loans, uh, and should, how should they just take their lines of credit and uh, sweep them into their bank accounts uh, they're having hard discussions with landlords. They're having hard discussions with uh, suppliers and perhaps customers right now. Uh, the biggest challenge right now is how can you create that framework that works for you with cash? It goes back to the 13 week cash flow. You definitely want to ask landlords right now for forbearance agreements on your lease terms. Most of them have back ended the uh, lease payments. Probably three months, 90 days is the most, um, uh, I would say the median right now of that, where you're not going to be paying for 90 days uh, and they'll back end the lease. If you do get a forgiveness of that for the next three months, please make sure you contact your accountant. Sometimes that can be taxed. I doubt the government's going to have time, but you want to redo with your attorney the lease agreement if they're going to do a forgiveness on any months of lease payments. Uh, it's a very straightforward uh, lease amendment. Uh, make sure you do document all that with your attorney, whether, whatever the landlord proposes. They've got some pressure from the, their banks right now too, uh, but they're getting also 90 day forbearance agreements in many cases. So you definitely wanna pursue uh, forbearance agreements with your landlord. They are getting amazing um, uh, uh, agreements being made with the banks. It's it's actually shocking. What about um, similarly? You know, you're you're getting all these calls and these emails. Uh, what's the most common mistake that you've seen companies do? They're afraid to contact anybody. They're afraid to contact their customers, their vendors, landlords. They're afraid to even do anything. There's a paralysis, although I do see people now starting to come out of that shell. Uh, the paralysis is the, is the killer of any business or, or any, anyone's core. You've got to take action, build a framework around that action, keep with your routines as best you can. If you go in the office at seven, then by gosh, sit at your home office by seven. Keep as much of you that you can. If you can go in your office safely, and not uh, violate any stay at home issues, go into the office. And then what about, I mentioned it earlier, shifting from uh, defense to offense. Uh, what's your take on that? And folks you've been talking to, are, are people starting to look forward a little bit or are they still um, kind of stuck in the here and now? I do think people are starting to come out of it. I wish our governor and other governors would pick a date and yes, the virus does determine some of those dates. But when you get this start and stop every two weeks, people were ready to start on Monday and that was then changed. The governor's in a very difficult position and so are other governors, but they need to really actually create uh, uh, 
take away the uncertainty. Business does not do well with uncertainty. If we can have a date certain where we can start up again and have that time to plan for it, then that will change everything in a day. Yeah, we just saw um, with the last um, two week extension, a bunch of restaurants shut down. So they were yes. hoping the governor was gonna open, the governor didn't, and a bunch of restaurants pulled the plug. So every time this gets extended, we're probably gonna see more and more businesses yes. uh, get cut out. So, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate, um, unfortunate uh, event. Anyhow, but yes, the governor is in a uh, tough spot, but I, like you, um, would rely on business to make uh, good decisions to allow themselves to open up safely and be able to uh, take care of their employees as well as serve, the, serve their customers. Everyone's so, one that can protect themselves. Now, if you look at the meatpacking plants, they made some very poor decisions on how they were handling the virus and, and its spread. Um, I'm sure they wish they had done things differently now. Uh, you know, but everyone's going to, I think, really take this to heart and do it the right way. No matter what the business is, everyone is going to do that and work with your insurance carrier as well. They can help guide you through a lot of uh, challenges that are gonna be coming up ahead because they don't want third-party subrogation or litigation issues themselves. Sure, so inside of uh, my firm, uh, we've been talking with some of our clients about what a low-touch economy looks like, a low-touch society. Um, if uh, I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit, your crystal ball, if you look out 12 to 18 months, and let's say you had a few of your clients or prospects or friends, or you're just talking to me on the phone, what would you advise people to do based on a forward looking crystal ball again, kind of thinking 12 to 18 months from now? Um, first, I still go back to the cash flow. If you don't have cash to pay your employees to lubricate and run the business, if you want to think of it that way, there won't be a business to worry about at that point. Then you're starting to get into should I file a, a bankruptcy, do an Article 9 UCC sale, which is an asset sale outside of bankruptcy, find ways that are creative to keep your business in, alive and employ, employ as many people as possible. Um, this will go, this will pass. There probably will be some remedies in the next 12 months to make the, and they're already issuing them now through uh, Gilead and other firms. Um, to lessen the symptoms, it's not going to cure until a vaccine comes out. And vaccines are one of the greatest inventions of humankind. Um, and it changes the world for, for all of us. Uh, that vaccine probably will be available in modest doses to all cities, probably within the next 12 months, if not sooner. But for all of us, we need to plan out probably an 18 month slow rollout of all of us and business is restarting again and it's going to be difficult we may have a second wave in the fall be prepared have an action plan in place there's some amazing action plans out right now they're in the public domain on the internet that uh, are, are priceless okay so i have a couple of announcements and then i'll, I'll give you a, a final opportunity to share some some closing thoughts or perspectives all right so an announcement uh Tomorrow, uh, for the live streamers out there, 11.45 to 1, we're doing a Club E joint session with the EPI, the Exit Planning Institute. I know, Eric, you're a fan of them. Uh, we're going to be talking about business value enhancement strategies. Again, that is tomorrow, 11.45 to 1. On Friday, from 12 to 1, join us for lunch with Mike Vekich. Mike runs the U.S. Bank Stadium as he's gonna be talking about the future of sport events. Interesting to get Mike's take on what the sporting, look, look, sporting world looks like going forward. And then next Monday, we're doing a happy hour with Darren Lynch. Uh, Eric, you mentioned Darren. Darren again uh, runs the e-commerce firm Irish Titan um, and that will be happy hour four to five next Monday. So Thursday, Friday, Monday, with Digital Club E, please join us. Um, again, Eric, thank you very much for your time. Uh, as we close up here, any final um, thoughts, perspectives, uh, any words of uh, wisdom you'd like to leave everybody with today? What I'd like to share with everyone is that you have faith in yourself, have faith in your team. We will get through this. I know you hear that repeatedly, but if you find a path that gives you that strength, then follow that path. 
keep that faith because that faith is where this is going to be the next start of a whole new revolution. We're already beginning to see it. There's a huge bright future out for this, for all of us uh, humans on this planet right now. And it's, it's coming. Uh, it, every time there's a crisis like this, there's a renaissance. Keep the faith. Great. I'm totally with you on that. Keep the faith. Uh, this too shall pass. All right. So uh, Eric's contact info uh, can be found in the comment field. Again, Eric, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you. Uh, and thank you. Look forward to talking again.